So going back on our little 236 Perkins, uh, we'll show you guys how to put the head together. We'll treat this video as if you could do it just as a head gasket itself. If you've had uh, coolant leaking into the combustion chamber or you've had a head gasket blow pressurizing your cooling system, um, basically disassemble everything on top of the head. You would have your engine in the frame of the tractor. You wouldn't need to go as far, but we did a full engine rebuild on this. So when doing a head, um, in the last video, we showed you that the head gasket is topping up and we just put the head back on again. I'm not gonna pull the head off again because it's pretty straightforward. I don't have much to show you on the head because whenever I do a head gasket, I send the head out to get machined. So there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the machining uh, to get the head checked out. I don't have the tools to pressure check it or to uh, magnaflux it and check it for cracks in that. Um, I just don't have those tools and I don't have any desire to do that because I just send it out and employ other people in the town. They know what they're doing. Uh, they will dunk it, clean it, uh, check it for um, cracks and pressure test it, uh, grind the valves, uh, replace the seats if need be, and I get it back and I don't have to worry about it. I know that this head is 100%. Good investment of three to 500 bucks generally for a little four cylinder like this. It gets a little more expensive when you're into uh, uh, say a 24 valve Cummins, so four valves times six, that gets expensive, but still well worth it. Those also crack. The head gasket would have blown for a reason, and probably because the head got hot or warped or, or whatever. So check it for straight edge, uh, check it with a straight edge. When you bring it to the machinist, you can actually bring him a, a flat stock and get him to machine one surface, and if you hang that bar up, you can check it for uh, flatness. But regardless, I send them out to get the valves and, and the seats and everything done anyway. So um, they'll also check the uh, tension on the springs, make sure that the springs are in good shape and replace the, uh, check the guides and, and everything as well. So um, if you wanna do a head gasket, there's nothing to taking the head off and doing it yourself. Uh, that's in the previous video of the, the teardown. Um, and to install it again, we'll go over how to install it. But as for the actual machine work on the head, just uh, find a good local reputable machine shop. I take it to Northtown Machine here in, uh, close to Niagara Falls, uh, well in Fawn Hill area. And uh, we're gonna take off from here. So, taking the bolts and uh, took them to the wire wheel, cleaned them all up, put a little bit of lubricating oil on the threads and on the bottom of the head, and that will give us a more accurate torque reading. Uh, before we put the head on, we blew out all the holes. Uh, if you can't spin them, the, the bolts in by hand, then uh, you might have to run a tap into the uh, block and clean out the threads. But uh, you definitely want to make sure there's no oil or coolant or fuel or anything sitting in the holes because once you torque the bolt down, that has nowhere to go. Uh, fluids don't compress and you end up cracking your block. Or you don't get an accurate torque reading and you have another head gasket issue later on. Uh, we're going to buzz these down just snug with an impact. Uh, definitely don't put any torque on it, no ugga on it, just spin them down and then we will do a torque setting in three different settings with an actual torque wrench. Um, these ones will end up to 88 foot-pounds and then the two nuts will go down to 100 foot-pounds. Some of these bolts will be the same length on the inside of the valve cover as they are on the outside. Try to keep the ones with the paint outside so your paint doesn't end up inside your engine. And then we are good to go. So general rule for any um, any head is to start torquing from the inside and work your way out. Um, your torque wrench is most accurate on the in the middle of its torque rating. So if your torque wrench is set uh, is accurate between 50 and 100 pounds, 75 would be the most accurate. So grab uh, you might need a you might need a couple different torque wrenches just to um, accomplish the most accurate setting, but that's the way it is. Make sure you reset your torque wrenches to zero when you're done. If it's a mechanical torque wrench, it has a spring inside that sets the tension. And if you stretch that spring by forgetting to set it back to zero, you are going to have an inaccurate torque wrench. So this one will set to 30 foot pounds. This is the least critical of all of them. This torque wrench goes up to 80. So I'll do my 60 foot pound torque across the board. At this point, I just go across uh, row by row and make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Luckily, I film everything, put it on YouTube, and you guys would surely let me know where I went wrong. And they're all kind of turning just uh, five degrees. 
and that's because as you bring the torque down of the entire head, it takes a little bit of the tension off. Next setting is 88 foot pounds. If you had an engine that would need a um, stretch to yield, meaning that you torque it to say 90 foot pounds, you add another 90 degrees, it's a good idea to put a mark on it so that you know that is done. If you torque it to 90 foot pounds and then add 90 degrees to it, you can always uh, check all of them at 110 um, foot pounds and if any of them turn, you know you forgot one, but uh, a little sharpie on there really helps everybody sleep at night. Now, uh, these heads, I like to get them hot and then pull the valve cover off and retorque the head one more time because that's just what I do. So we'll get into that once it's all running. But for now, let's torque down. Put our rockers in, then we can set our rockers. Uh, we'll leave the injectors out just so we can turn it over and set our valves. And then um, we will be able to put our injectors in afterwards. So we're not fighting compression. Here we go. Drop your push rods in, make sure they're nice and clean. Um, make sure you check to make sure that they're not bent. Lube the top and the bottom, and then stick it in the lifter. And I always just pull up just a little bit to make sure that it's actually in the lifter where it's supposed to be. Now check if a push rod is bent or straight, just roll it on a flat surface. If it's got any wiggle to it, it'll be pretty apparent. And we're good to go. We got our rocker nice and clean. This is where the oil supply comes from, so make sure you blow that out. Make sure that there's nothing in there. There should be a new rubber in your engine gasket kit or in your head gasket kit. So replace that and um, oil everything up nicely before you put it on. Now when you're tightening down or even before you're loosening off the rocker shaft, if it's one full unit like this, it's a good idea to back the settings right off so that there's no tension on it. Now there's one place that I sometimes skimp a little bit on because I just take the rocker shaft off evenly and torque it down evenly. And what you don't want to do is bend the uh, the rocker. If it's individual rockers, like you would find on a 12 valve, it's not a big deal. But uh, I've never had an issue without backing them off, so I generally don't. My buddy had a David Brown tractor that wasn't getting oil because this uh, oil line wasn't in and it ran for years and years and then it quit running. And they looked and everything was warped and bent. And they put it on a vise, they banged it straight, and I think they got another 15, 20 years out of it before it actually needed any more work. So, the final torque for the rocker shaft is 54 foot-pounds. Okay, so at this point we can set our valves. Uh, valves, intake and exhaust can set the 10 thou. Uh, when number one is rocking, number one would be on compression, so you can set both the intake and the exhaust at that time. Crack these loose, back these off, or tighten them, however you need to. Spin it in the proper rotation. Firing order is one, three, four, two. So the next, if four was rocking, two would be rocking next, so you can set three. When two is rocking, you set three. When three is rocking, you set two. When four is rocking, you set one. When one is rocking, you set four. Uh, we're not gonna get into big detail on this. We have a full video on valve set, so we're gonna put the link to that on there. Uh, no point in making videos on the same thing twice. We're gonna set these valves. Now when you're setting your valves, it's a good idea to question everything. Uh, notice how that one, I set the gap, but the threads are so much higher than all the other ones. And that's because this push rod is actually came out of the little uh, hollow in the lifter and is actually on the very edge of the lifter. So that would fire up, would run good for a little bit, and then it would clatter and make noise like crazy. Uh, don't ever use the starter to turn it over because if you do set these wrong, the valves can hit the piston. Just take your time, put your, uh, put your bar on it, put your, uh, turn it over on the flywheel with the screwdriver, whatever it takes to, to, to move this over, and then just double check everything afterwards. We're going to crack this one loose, push the push rod back to where it's supposed to be, 
Um, I don't think you can see it. Let me. See. Can you see how? See how close it is. See the little gap in the push rod on on that side. It's hard to see. Anyway, take my word for it. Just uh, take your time and do it right. All right, valves are set. We have this cheap little cork gasket that goes here and is always a pain in the butt. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of silicone on the bottom, not much, and not on the top because we're gonna get this engine hot and then we're going to retorque the head and reset the valves. So that'll keep the gasket down to the block. Um, hopefully the top of the gasket stays dry and then we'll put a little bead of silicone on the, on the valve cover when we put it back on for the last time. So here we go. I use this ultra black, uh, it's great for oily, oily stuff and you don't need a whole lot. Uh, too much is actually really bad because it squeezes the gasket out, you don't want that either. Spread that out with our fingers, yum yum. Um, we're going to torque that down uh, just super lightly, let it dry for about 40 minutes or so and then torque it down. So while we're waiting for that to dry we can... Uh, um, put our injectors in and do the front cover, stuff like that. Okay, so the injectors are pretty straightforward. Uh, it used to have a, a rubber gasket around here. Um, this, uh, my new kit didn't come with it, which is really odd, but it doesn't matter. They seal on this copper washer um, and just fit around the nozzle like that. These are kind of a one-time use thing because they get crushed. Um, if you do need to reuse them, you can sometimes warm them up with a torch. Um, and they'll expand and then they'll shrink, but not as small as they originally were. And then when you bolt them down the next time, um, you can uh, squeeze it that last little bit and it might seal yet for you. Um, the tips are replaceable, so if you take this cap off, uh, you can replace the tips if there's an issue with it. We have a video on um, testing in mechanical injectors and what to look for, spray pattern and that, so we'll put the link to that up. Uh, we're not going to go over that again. Um, taking this cap off and tightening a spring at the top um, increases the pressure that they pop at. Um, but uh, these all tested really good, so we're going to put them right back in again. They're just going to drop the washers down in the bores, one in each hole, making sure that they're nice and flat. We blew the holes out so they're nice and clean. And then we're just going to pop the injectors in. Now I'm sure there's a torque spec for these. I don't know what it is. I tell you, the main important thing is that you torque them down evenly. Go back and forth five times more than you think is normal and then put them as tight as you think is possibly good without snapping the little 516 stud and then run it and cross your fingers and hope it doesn't leak. If it leaks, try and tighten it a bit more and when you snap these ears then uh, Go get another injector but uh, cleanliness is your main friend so here we go all right we're gonna stop the video there uh, just to keep it short enough for people who just want to know the information on doing a head gasket uh, the next video we'll get into the timing cover we'll show you how to time all the gears the balancer on the bottom uh, and we're basically gonna put the injection pump on all the fuel lines the uh, the back plate, the front plate, but um, that's not really relevant to this video right now. So we'll stick around for that and then uh, that'll be a finishing video on just the block itself and then we'll put it back into the tractor. We've got a new water pump, rad hoses, uh, the radiators all clean and a new oil pressure gauge, um, at least the uh, line going to it anyway. So uh, thanks for watching, uh, check out all the other build videos that we got going on. Um, never a dull moment and uh, like the video if you're like the video and subscribe if you uh, are getting stuff out of um, making these videos uh, cats hungry so uh, I gotta feed her right yeah and uh, we'll see you guys on whatever videos next here we go oh we got GTO stuff coming up so, yeah, here we go